Hey, I'm Tony Moreland, and this is POW, podcast of wisdom from the Samsung Developer Program, where we talk about the latest tech, new trends, and give insight into all of the opportunities available for developers looking to create for Samsung. On today's show, I interview Chris Shomo from Infinity Watch Faces. Chris was one of the first designers to start selling watch faces on the Galaxy Store and has become one of the most successful. Along the way, he's inspired many other designers to start creating for Samsung with his willingness to share his knowledge and expertise. In fact, it was a video I saw of Chris who inspired me to start designing watch faces, which eventually led me to my gig at Samsung. So it is an absolute honor to bring him onto the podcast. And let me warn you, Chris and I love to talk, and sometimes we go off on a few tangents talking about how his house was not only featured in an episode of Ghost Hunters, but was also used in a big-time Hollywood movie. And of course, we talk a lot about designing and marketing apps for Samsung. Enjoy. I am super excited to have on the podcast today, Chris Shomo from Infinity Watch Faces. So let me first actually start by asking, who is Chris Shomo? Hey, Tony. Thank you so much for having me on the show uh, who is Chris Shomo? I'm, I'm a lot of things. I am a designer, which, you know, initially, you know, when someone is a designer, they can be quirky. They can be geeky. Sometimes they can be introverted sometimes, or they can be outgoing. Um, it depends on my mood and the time of day. I can be a little bit of everything. <laughs> so, um, but you know, I, I, I can be the, the shy person in the room, but you know, get me talking about something that I'm interested in. And then sometimes you can't get me to shut up. So. <laughs> I can absolutely relate to that, that, that you pretty much have described my personality, <laughs> definitely, you know, being a fellow designer. And that's why I'm really excited about this podcast is uh, we can kind of geek out a bit as we're talking design. <laughs> cool. So how did you first get your start in graphic design? Oh, geez. Um, well, I guess it goes all the way back to when I was a little kid. Uh, my mom always had me doing artistic projects for school, actually. Um, I would always find a, a way to make some sort of artistic project if I could for, for homework. I would always go the art route. It was a lot more fun. And then in high school, I did a project. It was a pen and ink drawing of the Shakespeare Globe Theater. And I did it for an, an English class. And I decided to take an art class as an elective. And Mrs. Martin, my art teacher in high school, she um, asked for some examples of my previous work. And out of my book bag, I took out a folded piece of paper and then I just like unfolded it to this, this gigantic poster size of the Shakespeare Globe Theater. It was that, that artistic <laughs> drawing that I did. Wow. And then uh, she said, okay, lesson number one, do not fold up your artwork. <laughs> so that. that's how I kind of got started. And that drawing was, was pretty awesome. And she kind of excelled me through. She, she put me into the, the higher level art classes uh, real quick. They kind of skipped me a couple classes and I won a lot of uh, awards uh, against other students and some regional awards in the area. And then afterwards I decided to go to art school and my, my brother discovered the Savannah College of Art and Design down in Savannah, uh, Georgia. And yes. um, so, yeah, I, I attended there. Wow. So um, for like, Good while too, almost like a Van Wilder experience, but multiple <laughs> degrees. <laughs> Wonderful. Again, I can relate to that. I, uh, I definitely took the uh, the long route through uh, through college. So straight out of college, then did you work for a, a large company? Did you start your own your own gig? What did you? Uh, what was your first step coming out of college? Okay, well, uh, I graduated with my undergrad in computer art with a focus on three D animation, and that was in two thousand and five. And right after that, I, I interviewed for some companies and I just really did not want to be stuck in a cubicle just, you know, for the jobs that I was offered. So I ended up taking a job for a contractor and helping build a house from ground up. Oh, wow. And after that, I decided I was interested in architecture and I put together a portfolio and SCAD gave me a portfolio scholarship to come back and um, they paid for the master's and I got my master's in architecture. Wow. I did not know that. Yeah. So man of many secrets, I guess, <laughs> some hidden talents there. Um, but I, I did graduate after the economy crashed and it was really hard to find a job in architecture. So I started a website design company. And um, from there, I just kind of, you know, word of mouth, I just kept on gaining clients until eventually I had clients all across the East Coast. So you went to school in Savannah, Georgia. Are you currently in Savannah? Is that where your office is based out of? Yes, Savannah is where my heart is. I, I love the city. 
And I'm actually president of the neighborhood association for the neighborhood that I'm in. And uh, it's one of the largest neighborhoods in Savannah. Okay. And uh, Southern Living Magazine actually ranked it the number one neighborhood to live in in the South as well. Wow. Uh, right before all the craziness this year, we got that sure. designation. <laughs> sure. Um, so it, it's quite interesting because it, there's so many local businesses and residential neighborhoods in this neighborhood. So just dealing with everything from alcohol licenses and giving our blessing and you know zoning issues and you know, just, just figuring out what's going on with crosswalks and trash cans and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's interesting. <laughs> so I actually heard a, a very interesting note about not just the neighborhood, but the house that you live in. Yes. You once told me that it, it is actually haunted. It is haunted and it's documented on a Ghost Hunters episode. Uh, I believe it's 2010. Home is where the heart is. Okay. Yeah. It's all about um, the current family that was living there um, and their experiences with the ghost. They, they say they've um, seen this ghost, this little girl. Um, apparently her name is Noni Clark, and she's been appearing, um, I guess, for the past, or, or, well, the previous owner saw her 200 times. That's what they said, 200 or more times. And ghost hunters did believe that there were dual entities in the house as well. Um, I think, uh, okay, well, Noni Clark, uh, she was the daughter of the guy who built the house back in 1896, and he owned a, a lumber mill, and he inherited this lumber mill from his father when he was 26 years old, and he, he built the house. Uh, Noni was one of his daughters, and apparently she was one of the first women to receive a pacemaker for her heart, um, and that led to her dying somehow. I don't know what happened to it, um, but she died when she was in her 50s. But supposedly she's coming back as like a 12-year-old girl. Um, I've never seen her. I've had some strange things happen in the house, doors slamming, things disappearing from one place, appearing sure. in another place. Um, not my imagination. Other people have experienced things too. Um, but how she was identified is that the lady across the street had a, apparently I um, a recognized the description of the nightgown that she appeared in because she had made that nightgown for her when she was young. So um, I'm getting a little cold chills thinking yeah. about it right now <laughs> but it, it is interesting but yeah I, I don't feel scared in the house um i think the house accepts me i've never had to smudge it or whatever you call it or you know <laughs> try to clear spirits out of there um but but it's an interesting story and it's it's always fun when somebody else experiences something oh that is that is absolutely wild to hear you know <laughs> and, and we'll we'll circle back to the uh, the whole aspect of design in this podcast um i will note before i'm going to jump ahead just a little bit your designs have a little bit of a quirkiness to them. And I, sometimes I'm seeing, you know, ghosts and aliens and crazy <laughs> things. So I think that may be where you're getting some of your inspiration. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you live in a dynamic city. It's actually one of the most haunted cities in America. Sure. Um, you know, and it's it's one of the most wild cities in America, too. I mean, you have this, this local feel, but then at, at the same time, you know, it's one of the, the few places in America where you have an open cup and, you know, take a drink from one bar to another downtown. Um, so it leads to a little bit of craziness. Of but I myself pride myself in being a little crazy. You know, you have to be in this crazy world. And I love surprising people with designs, too. Like, like one second, yeah, you'll have a butterfly that looks realistic landing on your on your uh, watch. And then the the next moment. You know, you have some zombies that are appearing with your step goal. Biohazard Z, that's a, a great one. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So we were fortunate actually to come out and visit you at Savannah College of Art and Design, where we came and hosted a session with your students, um, teaching them all about uh, theme designing for phones and, and watch faces. Um, and that connection actually came through you. So that was my opportunity to come out to Savannah and, and get to meet you in person. What a beautiful city. I mean, it, it really, and, and the campus itself too is pretty unique because from what I understand, Savannah College of Art and Design, they're like the number one occupancy of, of buildings in, in downtown. Is that correct? I mean, as far as how the campus is, is put together? Yeah, it seems like it's every other building. And it, it's really amazing what they've done for Savannah. They encourage a lot of businesses to move in as well to cater to the students. And, and they really played a huge role in where Savannah is today. 
you know, we get millions and millions of visitors uh, every single year and school is to, to thank for a lot of that, you know, just the, the restoration projects and encouraging restoration. And uh, then, of course, we have a, a great historic preservation society alone, just in Savannah, being the oldest planned city in America and, and a genius plan too. Uh, just how it integrates with all the, the giant oak trees that are in all the squares and, and people mm-hmm. are r- really jealous of those, those oak trees and, you know, um, as as a person living there, I always try to make sure that I go out and I, I do what the visitors do just to remind myself, you know, what a beautiful city it is. And then, you know, just going to school in those historic buildings as well. It just it helps with the creativity. And yeah, the, the location definitely helps with the, the whole artistic side of things. Yes. And, and for those who don't know, Savannah is actually the city where they filmed the scene of Forrest Gump on the bench. Yep. The, that iconic moment in Forrest Gump where he's sitting on that bench. That was in Savannah at one of the uh, squares. I actually walked by that to, uh, to take a look at that for myself. Just an amazing, amazing city. And it's actually known for a lot of movies as well. Um, like the, the Lady and the Tramp that's on Disney plus that was filmed they actually looked at my house to potentially film it there um but they said the lot the lot was too big uh so they actually filmed it a few blocks down and um yeah and then also uh my house is where the movie legend of bagger vance was filmed um there's a a scene where it's where the, the little kid lived the caddy and there's a whole scene at the dinner table where they're they're talking and stuff. That's my dining room. Oh wow! And uh, it was one of the houses, the few houses around there that had a dining room with a, a view to the kitchen as well. And they needed that for the scene. So Robert Redford picked out the wallpaper. <laughs> it's kind of cool. <laughs> that is absolutely crazy. <laughs> yep. Oh wow! I knew this podcast would be fun, but I had no idea. <laughs> so let's circle back around um, and let's talk a little bit about design. Okay. Tell me how you first heard about the Samsung Galaxy Watch. Okay, well, uh, I'm a tech geek. I love any type of mobile tech, especially uh, before the watches came out. I was like a, a cell phone fanatic. Like, you know, first we wanted them to all get small and now they're getting bigger. Yes, now we need the biggest phone ever, um, which I, I absolutely love. But yeah. uh, I was eyeing smartwatches for a while. And um, finally, I was like, okay, I'm getting one. At the time, I'm like, I couldn't really afford it, but you know, I don't care. I'm getting one. <laughs> Uh, so I, I went down to, to Best Buy and I, um, got the, the first, uh, uh, gear S two sport. I, I just loved it. it. It was great. But there, there was one thing that, that bothered me. I needed more watch faces. Uh, I was bored with the watch faces that were available. Uh, I went on the, it was the galaxy apps um, before, but, um, now the galaxy store and, you know, I, I even paid like I think it was like five or $10 for a watch face. that looked like the coolest one out there. And I'm like, all right, how do I make my own? So that's when I just Googled and I found it was the galaxy watch designer. Uh, well at the time it was the, the gear watch designer, uh, 1.0. Wow. <laughs> and, um, like right when it first came out, I mean, I, I think I might've actually caught it within days of it coming out and I downloaded it and I just started playing around with it. And, I, I never even planned on releasing any of them for anybody else. I just, you know, wanted to make some for me. And then I'm like, all right, look, I can, I can load some and, and see if I can make a few dollars. Let's do it. Uh, so um, I think I made like $17 off of two watch faces the first day. And then I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, like, you know, what if I have like 300 watch faces on there? You know, how much, how much can I make? Sure. Uh, so, I mean, sure enough now, um, gosh, I have about 394 watch faces and themes published. Wow, that's amazing. And, and how long would you say this has been? Oh gosh, I started in, I think it was February, early February of uh, 2016. Wow, okay. That's when I started. And um, you can actually kind of look back at some of my very early designs and and see how the design has, has improved over time. Sure. Um, the very first one I did, I just called it Gear Spin. And I didn't really know much about the designer, um, the software and everything. I was just getting into it. Didn't really think that I could even put a graphic on, you know, a watch hand and use it other than a watch hand at the time. So I even animated a gear using Adobe Flash, exported the frame animations out and threw it in there just to get a gear spinning. Sure. Now I'm like, oh, I can just put it on a second hand. (laughs) But I'm thinking coming from a designing standpoint, not a watch standpoint. And 
and that's something that you that you really have to start doing is start thinking you know i'm also a watchmaker in a way exactly you know so so you got to start thinking that language and, and that starts um you know meshing with the creative ideas and then you, you start you know you got to focus on functionality at the same time that you're trying to focus on dynamics and what it looks like that sort of thing so that's true and you know i do a lot of teaching uh, to students just learning how to watch design and it, the challenge is, is that they've got this tool that can allow them to just do amazing graphics and amazing animations. And then they forget that really, this is a timepiece where people need to quickly tell what time it is. So even though you can have a lot of fun with your graphics and your animation, you still need to make it where, you know, on quick notice, you can actually tell what time it is. I mean, that's the whole, the function of the watch. And that's what I love with your designs as well. I mean, you've got some amazing, fun, quirky, crazy designs I mean, everything from dogs and butterflies to spooky eyeballs and reapers. So let's talk a little bit about your approach to design and some of the tools you're using. You had mentioned um, Adobe Flash. So we're going back in the day. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Wow. I don't use that anymore, but but I used to use that all the time. <laughs> so tell me kind of your workflow, you know, when you, you know, from concept, your tools, um, are you sketching on pencil and paper when you have an idea or do you just dive right into a, a software program? Well, um, I guess this is where professors are going to want to smack me and I should be sketching more that, that, you know, SCAD always says you start with the basics and you start sketching and I need to carry around a sketchbook, but no, I kind of jump into the software first. Um, but in a way, I kind of sketch digitally. Uh, I'll, I'll start with a program like Adobe Illustrator just to get the basic shapes done. And I'll move them into Photoshop, of course, to get the, the nice effects, to get the textures, um, some of the shadows, or to create the shadow layers that you'll export separately later. You know, those are our two of the main tools of getting, I guess, the the framework of the of the watch. But but of course, I, I like to do the animations. Of course, yeah. So, so using a lot of After Effects and Premiere and sometimes when I have to, Maya and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, you know, getting it out to the the frames and also being very cautious about file size as well. Um, you know, we are dealing essentially with an app, even though it's very focused around design, which I'm, I'm very thankful. Thank you, Samsung, for giving me awesome design software uh, where I don't have to code everything. Uh, but, but you do have to, to remember that, you know, people will get frustrated if you have a, you know, a 50 megabyte watch face, which I mean, I could easily make one that large, but, uh, it's all about understanding the, the compression and understanding your tools to make sure that, uh, when you deliver that watch face, it's fun, it's dynamic, it has all the effects, but it doesn't take forever to install or it doesn't, you know, someone doesn't have an issue with it. So understanding the technical side, but, but really understanding your design software, uh, that helps. You know, and you had mentioned a a little trick that I may have actually learned from you in that where you had said that, you know, your, your first animation was done using flash and bringing those in as animated GIFs. But you then said, Hey, I could have just made this a a watch hand. Um, And that's one of those tricks that when you realize that watch hands don't actually have to be watch hands. It's the, the, the watch hand feature is basically just a rotating graphic that you can then set its, its direction that it rotates. You can set the, you know, the, the time that it rotates. So again, another tip that came from Chris that, that's helped me in my, uh, in my success as a watch face designer. And I'm actually going to take this moment to, um, to thank you again, because it was your, you had mentioned um, you started in 2016. I think it was uh, at the developer conference in 2017 that Samsung invited you out to actually speak at the event. Was that correct? Yes, that's right. So tell me a little bit about that, that experience, um, because it was after that conference, they posted the video online. And that's how I first learned about designing for Samsung. It was finding this video of Chris Shomo from Infinity Watch Faces uh, speaking at the conference that then got me excited. So tell me a little bit about that uh, that moment. The whole experience was awesome. At first, like, like when you get an email saying, hey, would you like to come to the Samsung Developers Conference? I'm like, what? At first, I'm just kind of like, Samsung sees me. This is cool. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, I'm getting so excited. The experience was great. Meeting the team was 
was wonderful. And, and just, you know, the team itself were, you know, the, the designers of the, the software, the galaxy watch designer and all that, they, they were so em embracing of everybody that, that came, it, it was such a wonderful experience. And then also talking with them and understanding, you know, their process and what goes into creating the software. That was amazing too. But I guess one of the, the most awesome and rewarding parts of this is all the designers. I mean, you too. I mean, that, that have come to me and it's just like, um, just been like, thank you for giving that presentation because you guys showed me that, you know, anybody can do this yeah. and, and, you know, and then if you have some fun and, you know, wonderful designs that people like, then, then you can really succeed at it as well. And I just, I love that. Um, yeah. That, that I could influence someone to, to start a watch face design career. Um, there, there's another one in particular, um, was it Avi with uh, USA design? Uh, he started a, a little bit later. He was doing some games for, uh, for the watch and he was there at the presentation as well. And now he's like one of the top sellers. Wow. It, it's amazing. He jumped into it. He found a, des a design formula that works really great with the active two, especially when that came out without the bezel at the time. Mm -hmm. And, um, he's just doing phenomenal. And, I, I just absolutely love to see that. And, and the fact that I might, might've played a part in pushing him in that direction is, is just, uh, it's, it's rewarding. It's, it's humbling. It's, it's cool. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. that's great. It was, you know, when I watched that video of your presentation and you had mentioned the first thing was that you can create these watch faces without coding. Mm -hmm. You know, I've done a little yes. bit of coding. My, my experience is a lot like yours. I mean, I, I had my own freelance design company. I did a lot of website designing. Um, but, when I learned that you could create these watch faces really without doing any coding. So it's just, it's like an extension of Photoshop or Illustrator. I mean, you're in, in using like After Effects with the timeline. You could have so much fun doing it. You had mentioned a little secret, again, just like the, the watch hands rotating, how you could actually have buttons that you could tap and reveal things by using a, um, a transparent PNG that didn't have any pixels in it. You use that as sort of like a cover button. Well, when I learned about that, I then dove into this whole idea of being able to tap certain areas of the watch and have it reveal new things. Like, you know, if you wanted to show your step counter, you could tap an icon and it would then show the numbers. So you could customize the look of the watch face, cleaning it up by, by not having all the graphics show, but tapping to reveal whatever sort of data you wanted to see. Your, your, your heart rate, beats per minute, I mean, all sorts of different uh, elements. And it was from you that, that I learned about that. I then have totally expanded on that, um, creating videos on Tap Reveal uh, that are shown on YouTube and, and doing a whole thing around that. And I've seen that a lot of people really enjoy, um, you know, learning about that. And that, again, came from you in that presentation. So well, thank you. <laughs> a big thank you from from the uh, the crowd of designers that I really appreciate what you've uh, what you've inspired. Thanks. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's fun. And, and that all kind of spawned from figuring out a solution uh, to putting all this information on a watch face, but not making it look too busy. And, uh, so, so kind of hiding it and revealing it there, uh, it, it kind of making use with the tools that are given to you and how can you make it work to simulate something, uh, when you, when you don't have all the code, uh, underneath it. So that's great. So um, we've talked a lot about watch faces. I know you also are doing theme designing. So was, yes. was that the progression? You first were designing for watches and then learned that you could actually do something very similar with uh, Theme Studio and creating themes for our phone devices? Yeah, no, the whole idea is matching your watch face to your theme and, and having total continuity between the two. And for example, uh, the shock theme, uh, that one's actually a free one. It's just called shock. You can look it up. Uh, that's the most downloaded theme that I have. And it has a matching watch face called shock as well. So you can just be shocking everybody with the shock. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, I love it. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, in, in those I also make to, I, I like to make fun and exciting, something that you wouldn't expect from dancing frogs to lightning bolts to, oh gosh, and I, I got so many more that are, are just about to come out 
I'm not going to you know, ruin the surprise, but y'all are going to love them. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm looking at your website and uh, the one that jumps out to me is Martian Mash. I know that's a, the great dancing alien. You know, how is that? Has there been a lot of success behind some of these quirky dancing? Because I've seen like Santa's dancing and you've got mm -hmm. a lot of fun ones. Well, yeah, because I mean, I want to reward people for taking some steps. Uh, a lot of these characters that are on there, they they change what they're doing based upon step goal percentage. So if you want the alien to dance, you're going to have to meet your step goal. Uh, uh, so in the morning, he might, you know, he's just standing there, he's waving at you. And then as you proceed during the day, he's running one direction and then towards you, then another direction. And then finally, yeah, he's dancing. Woohoo! You just reach your step goal. Oh, that's uh, great. One of the points of these watches is for, for health and to encourage people to, you know, get out of their chair and, you know, move around. And so why not make something that's fun and exciting and encourages that at the same time? That's great. So e even the one called bolt that has lightning bolts that go across, it starts as like a tiny little bolt. And as you proceed through the day with your step goal, more electricity comes out. And I'm getting ready to release another one with a fun little loving alien that does a lot of other stuff to your step goal as well. So that should be fun. Super excited about that. Tell me, it, watch face designing, theme designing, is this your full-time gig or do you actually uh, still go back and, and do some of your uh, website designing or anything beyond design? Oh, this is actually full part-time gig. <laughs> so uh, between that and website design, and I'm also uh, the CTO and creative director of the Picker Joe's brand. You've probably heard of antique pickers, vintage mm -hmm. pickers that go around and find really cool stuff and bring it to people. Yes. Uh, um, so yeah, there's a, a store in Savannah, Georgia called Picker Joe's Antique Mall, and uh, it's 10,000 square feet, 25,000 items that change daily, about 65 antique pickers that go out and find all the stuff. Uh, we like to say that it's an experience like no other because it, it really is. Uh, we have people that come in from different parts of the world, uh, from across the country, and they go, wow, this is the best antique mall experience that I, I've ever had. And uh, we've also been on, oh gosh, I don't know how many interviews so far with the same production company that does American Pickers. And so they are still considering us um, possibly for that show. Oh, wow. But, uh, but I design the, the branding and do all the advertising and we do crazy videos, usually filmed with the latest Samsung phone as well. And uh, if you go to our Instagram, if you look at our YouTube and stuff, you'll, you'll just see some of the, the wild and insane advertisements that, that we do all the time. And, and that's one of the things that, that really sets it apart from other stores. I mean, have you ever heard of an antique store that... Um, you know, for Halloween has monsters invading us and appearing everywhere and like all sorts of things. No, probably <laughs> not. But I encourage everybody to check it out. And if you're in Savannah, you, you've got to experience it. You really do. Definitely. And, and I can see in your designs, you definitely have a lot of fun uh, humor happening. I'm, I'm looking at the, the watch face for Joe. Joe's your, your character of the dog that seems like his tongue is actually bigger bigger and <laughs> and than his head and wagging more than his tail. Yep, yep. And um I actually have a a dog named Joe. Um and that's actually what Picker Joe's is named after too. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Go figure. So, um, he's a Jack Russell and he actually looks very similar to Joe and he licks all the time. He's always happy and always mischievous as well too. So, um Again, he'll react to your step goal. He'll he'll do some fun stuff at 50% as well. So definitely check that out. So uh, are you doing all this design work yourself or do you have a team of designers that work with you in producing watch faces and themes? Uh, most of the stuff, it's just me. But uh, I do have a, another, a, a friend and fellow colleague that graduated with me, um, Jonathan Millard. Uh, he's over in Denver right now. Um, so I, I do pull them in on, on tons of different projects. We're working on some right now, some interesting apps, and um, hopefully in the very near future, some game designs as well. Oh, that's great. So. That's great. Yeah, games is a, a big push for Samsung. So super excited to hear that you're yeah. going to bring your, your brand over to that side and help us produce some amazing games. It's going to be fun. Do you work out of your house? Do you actually have an office space? Okay, I have multiple locations that I can work out of. Um, I, I definitely have the, the house set up and uh, with the, the cool gaming computer and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then we have the office, which is actually right above a florist. It's really cool. You can walk up the stairs and you smell roses. Love it. Always, like, <laughs> always get to stop and smell the roses every day. Nice. And, um, and then also working out of Picker Joe's as well in the, the side office there. 
So we talk a lot about Savannah. Is that where you were born or were you uh, born and raised somewhere else? Born and raised in the, the mountains of Virginia, in Pulaski, Virginia. Oh, wow. Yep. So a um, little town called Pulaski. It's in the middle of the Blue Ridge Mountains. And it's, it's your cool, um, I guess, Main Street hometown. Um, recently, it's been, been hit kind of a little hard from the economy. Uh, my master's thesis in school for architecture was actually called the Pulaski Institute of Art and Design, uh, which was taking the, the million square feet of the Pulaski furniture plant and changing it into a design school, uh, which would in turn hopefully help the economy and encourage businesses to open up to cater to students. And um, yeah, that, that was pretty much what my, my master's thesis was for school, ah, kind of focusing on my hometown. But uh, then, of course, I moved into to Savannah in 2000, and I've been there ever since. So let's talk a little bit about um, marketing. I mean, you are definitely one of the most successful designers for Samsung. Tell me some of the, uh, the, your, your tips and tricks when it comes to actually marketing your watch faces and your themes. Are you using social media? Um, are you doing any additional advertising? What's your, what's your approach to marketing? Okay, so um, first off, I started out with the website and just really making sure that it crawled on Google. Uh, so I'm always getting some sort of traffic. And so I, the website at any given moment can get like 200 to 500 hits a day, which, um, you know, that really helps just get the, the brand out there. And share the, uh, the URL. Oh, it's uh, infinitywatchfaces.com. And also social media, Instagram and Facebook. We used to use Google Plus a lot. It was a, a big designer community, but of course that's gone. Uh, but that has shifted over to the Facebook groups now. And like the Facebook group uh, that Ash with IoT Gadgets runs, um, it's one of the largest Facebook groups out there. And they have great moderation. Um, some good people are, are definitely running it. And it's a great place to really show off your designs and, and spread the word to, to everybody. And it has just a, a great following. So I, I always recommend, you know, get on social media and you just scream out your brand to everybody. I actually interviewed Ash at IOT gadgets on the podcast. So nice. if you haven't listened to that yet, go back a few episodes. It was a great, uh, great time. Uh, he's an excellent interview, great person doing amazing things. And yeah, that Facebook group is huge. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's got to take a lot of time to moderate. I'm sure it does. But um oh and also on YouTube, we got our our favorite watch face reviewer Andrew Jibber Jab reviews. Yes. And again, that came out of your presentation uh when you spoke at the conference, you had mentioned Jibber Jab and first thing I did when I became a watch face designer was track Jibber Jab reviews down on YouTube um and get him to review some of my watch faces. I have just uh, done a live chat with Andrew uh, that we published last week. Great interview. Talks a lot about strategies, um, not only using YouTube, but even beyond YouTube for marketing your app. So, And I know you've got a great relationship with, uh, with Andrew. Can I say this? Can I share this? You're helping him with a, a new website that he's launching. Is that correct? Yes. The, the website is in the, the very beginning stages. It's going to grow over time. i um, doing some, some interesting work on pulling his YouTube channel in all over the place. And yeah, it's, it's going to be something you're going to want to visit um, very often because he's going to have some cool giveaways and, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, so um, yeah, a Andrew's great to work with. And it's interesting because, you know, in the very beginning, he's tracking down watch face designers to, to do our reviews. And now everybody's tracking him down. Of course, yeah. <laughs> which is wonderful. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, yeah he's, he's done a phenomenal job and, and he's just, he's very vital to the community. I totally agree. I mean, Andrew's a great guy and, and a lot of uh, watch face designers owe their success to, uh, to Andrew. So your watch faces and themes have a lot of animation. So I want to ask about Instagram. A lot of times people just post pictures on Instagram. Are you utilizing videos on Instagram? Oh, probably more video than anything else. And, and a lot of that video is just taking my Galaxy phone and, and just recording the watch on my wrist. Uh, this is the first thing I want to do, actually, as soon as I, I have a design, like even almost done. I say work in progress. Um, and, and it's fun sometimes for your customers to see works in progress, to see the early stage and and all the work that goes into it as well. And and you'll find that you'll get a lot of a lot of following on there, uh, which is great. 
And, and a lot of times customers will, will critique it and, and you'll end up getting a better design in the very end because they kind of help with the design process. Ah, that's awesome. I think the first thing I do, of course, is I post on Instagram. And then the next thing I do is I head on over to that large Facebook group and I start announcing there. And, you know, I'll do some, you know, some works in progress, like post and that sort of thing. Um, you know, making sure that I replace that post as opposed to adding another one um, with, uh, you know, the final, you know, work and just, you know, keep on updating that and that sort of thing. Because, you know, everybody's notified if you add another picture to a post they like. Yep. <laughs> so, you know, just, just knowing these little tricks with social media and with Instagram, knowing how to use your hashtags. It's all about hashtags on Instagrams. Yes. Um, then you don't have to, to pay, essentially. Um, where on Facebook, you know, you might want to you know, every once in a while pay to advertise a little bit. Sometimes it, it works, but the, the main thing is being active with those groups, getting people yeah. to, to recognize your brand and getting repeat customers that also want to share your stuff too. Um, I'm glad you mentioned the hashtags. We actually posted on our site, which is developer.samsung.com. If you go to the galaxy store page, we actually posted a long list of valuable hashtags that you can use uh, whether you're marketing your watch faces or your themes or, or apps or games. So it's a great place to start to go uh, take a look at some some really good hashtags that could work. Nice. And, and I just need to give a huge shout out and thank you to everybody with the Samsung Developers Program because like I, I've also seen that grow over time and the resources available are, are just amazing. And it's so helpful. And you guys have, yeah, you've been great every step along the way. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, you know, one of the things that we've done to try and help designers like yourself uh, promote their apps is Galaxy Store badges, mm -hmm. which I know that you use. So uh, oh, tell yeah. me a little bit about your experience with that and, and where are you using those Galaxy Store badges? Well, those badges are great because first they make you look legit. They make you look professional because they, they know, you know, it's 100%, hey, this is available on the Galaxy Store. And also being able to, to track the clicks and where people are coming from. You can, you can make a link specifically for a Facebook promotion and you know how many people, you know, clicked on that to participate in that. Uh, so how do you know how, where to grow unless you know where you stand? And that helps you understand the statistics and where people are coming from. So it's a valuable resource. What about banner promotions? I love banner promotions. <laughs> you will see your best downloads during then the, uh, when you have one of those. And, and Ron is great. Uh, yes. You know, he helps guide you along, just making sure that the banner looks great. Um, definitely everybody needs to take in his comments, everything that he tells you, because I mean, he, he's saying them for a reason. So yeah. he will help your sales. <laughs> My um, uh, biggest success came from a watch face that I had done that, was featured on a banner promotion and it was crazy the amount of downloads and sales that were generated uh, by having that banner promotion. So for designers out there, um, once you've got a collection of strong designs, then you can approach uh, Samsung about being featured on a, on a banner. There is no cost to the banner, but there are a lot of people requesting it. You have to be approved to uh, to actually have your designs featured on a banner, but definitely worthwhile pursuing for sure. Yeah. And, and make sure that you have your, your social presence as well. And all your, your Facebook page and Instagram page and all of that when you submit for the banner, because you know, it's going to make you a better candidate for one. Yes, definitely. They actually look at that. They want to see previous downloads, how much success you've already had. Um, so once you've got some experience, it's definitely worthwhile to, at that point to reach out and, and apply for a banner promotion. Um, Going back to your videos, so you do have a lot of animation in your watch faces and your themes, and I know you leverage video. So talk a bit about YouTube. Are you taking like all of these designs each time and posting them on YouTube, creating videos to uh, expand your reach? Uh, most of them. The main reason to do the video for me on YouTube is to really have something dynamic to show on the Galaxy Store. Uh, when someone sees that video after they they land on your listing, it really can be the difference as to whether they're going to buy it or not. And since most of mine offer animations to them, it makes sense to have a video to, to show it off. One, one thing that I, I wish that the, the Galaxy Store had was an animated preview, like, on, like where the icon is. 
That would yes. be really cool because uh, then everybody would be gravitating towards mine and other animated faces instantly. Um, but but yeah, the the YouTube video is what really makes a difference. And and there are some watch faces I need to to actually go back and make some videos for. Sometimes you finish the face, and then of course you're like, oh, now I have this whole production I got to make. Sure, sure. Um, so. I totally agree with that. And let me explain a little bit further about what you were talking about. Uh, creating the video so that people can see it when they're viewing your Galaxy Store page. So on the Galaxy Store page for a, a watch app, uh, you have what are called screenshots. And these screenshots show still images of your graphics that you use, your marketing graphics. However, there's also a way for you to include a link to a video on YouTube. So you grab your YouTube URL, place it into your um, your application for the um for this app and the very first screenshot will actually show your youtube video instead of the still image so it's a great way for users like you had mentioned that want to see the motion um they can actually click on that screenshot and it'll launch the youtube video so it's a great way to uh to market you know motion in your graphics so you had mentioned that uh, your top theme is a free download. So let's talk a little bit about the approach of offering apps for free, because I know a lot of designers utilize the, the ability to you know, give away their apps, and some designers are a little tight with that, and they, they hold on to them, and they, and they don't do it. Where do you stand? I mean, are you using this as a marketing tool? Do you just want to like get your brand out there? Well, it, it started as a marketing tool because, you know, there's also a free section on the store. And if you don't exist on it, then, well, it's just another outlet that people are not going to find you. So uh, you definitely need to, to make a free one and a good free one, too. Just don't pick your worst design and be like, oh, I'm just going to make it free. No, no, not at all. It's not going to do any good. So, uh, for example, um, and actually I did a, a watch face for jibber jab reviews for, for Andrew <laughs> and, uh, that turned into my top downloading free watch face. And that one at one time, oh my goodness, I think it was downloading like one to 3000 times a day. Wow. So this is a branded jibber jab reviews watch face. Yes. So you, so I actually remember when he posted his review of that, mm-hmm. I didn't realize that you were the designer behind that. That's yep. awesome. <laughs> Yeah, but my name snuck on there like a little bit, but I wanted that to be mainly about him. Sure. Um, but but yeah, and that, that one still gets downloaded like hundreds of times a day and, and stuff. Um, that very solid one. And, and it gets reviews every single day, too. I love it. Oh, that's um, great. So having having some free faces, you can get discovered uh, from people that you would have never discovered you before, uh, especially if you can get your watch face up to, you know, a certain section of the free section which means it has to be good, (laughs) essentially. So um, having done this now for several years, I'm sure you have faced some challenges. Uh, Well, first it's been just the the challenges of, you know, just growing with the software and and understanding what you can do and taking advantage of updates to the software. Like when the the gyroscope became available and you could use that. Oh my gosh, I was so happy when we could do that because that just adds a, a whole new level of dynamics to the watch faces. Um, so it, it, it's really just, you know, learning your tools, but then also encountering that the watch face market has gotten a little bit congested with, you know, there's a lot of people, you know, so, uh, you definitely have a lot more competition than when I first started out. And, you know, I was just thinking the other day, I was like, wow, if I knew what I knew now, right in the very beginning, would I have been designing more sophisticated watch faces and, have like a whole monopoly on the market or something like that. You know, you always think back like, Oh my gosh. Um, but no, no, I, I grew at a great rate with the software, with the other designers. Uh, you'll find that a lot of the other designers have become, you know, friends. Uh, we all talk with each other. You know, we help out each other, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a great community. It, It really is. Talk about some of your favorite designers. You know, who are the, the designers that you follow that you're inspired by? Oh gosh, like um, Jeweler Broda, like oh my gosh, uh, Bergen, of course. Like like those are great, such clean watch faces. Um, I love those. Um, uh, uh, MD Matteo, I like oh, his yes. amazing. Oh my gosh, like uh, a little jealous there. We'll have to say, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, he's, um, th- th- those are just a few of, of some of the amazing designers out there and a lot of great designers. And, um, and, and again, the main thing is, you know, everybody 
communicating and, and kind of working with each other, uh, you feel like you are part of a community. You really Definitely. Do. Yeah, that's what I've noticed. Um, I, not too long ago, I actually did a podcast interview with Tomas Joschek from Vienna Studios. Yes, yes. Great person. Uh, mm-hmm. And he's done some amazing designs. Yeah, he's taken a different approach to watch face designing where he designs extremely high end, very expensive watch faces that are in the hundreds of dollars. Mm-hmm. And he is one of our top watch face designers. I mean, he has found a way to, you know, make amazing revenue um, off of these high end watch faces. So yeah, I love the community. It's, it's, it's been a lot of fun for me to not only be inspired by them when I was a watch face designer, but now being fortunate to be in a position working at Samsung, I now get to have these conversations and, um, and help out where I can with some of these, uh, you know, the rock stars of the watch facing design community. That's awesome. And I I promise you that we all appreciate you too. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Thank you. You've used Galaxy Watch Studio for some time now. I'm going to ask you, what sort of features would you like to see added to it? So you'd mentioned about adding animations maybe as a preview in the Galaxy Store, but what other features would you like to see added to to Galaxy Watch Studio? Um, uh, Probably some little nitpicky things uh, like being able to start and stop an animation with a click of a button, that that would be great to be able to have an animation react while you're you're mobile. For example, if I could have a guy that starts to run while I'm running, that would be cool too. Sure. That would even take that Joe watch face to another level, <laughs> uh, which would be awesome. And uh, then maybe in the future, and I, I think that someone was talking to me about this, but um, having the, the ability to do 3D and be able to put like a 3D mesh in there and have real shadows and that sort of thing. Um, who knows? That That's really thinking into the future, that sort of thing. Sure. And then if we look over to the theme side of things too, uh, my main want that I want right now is to have gyroscope action, to have parallax effects. I think that would add another dynamic to the theme designs. Yeah, I love that suggestion. Yeah, so um, just, you know, just having like, you know, three to five layers that you could work with that could react with the gyroscope to, to mess with for like the regular background image. Uh, people are looking at their phones. I don't even know how many times a day. So let's make it like the best, most awesome dynamic experience ever. And that, that, that would just be great. That's one yeah. of my main wishes for that. You know, and you were the first designer that I saw that truly leveraged the, the gyroscope on the watch. Um, where I, I can't remember the name of the watch face you had, but as you rotated your wrist because of the gyro functionality, these like metallic big doors just like opened <laughs> up to then show, you know, the like data, you know, whether it's the digital clock or a uh, heart rate. Um, but it was so cool how I could rotate my wrist and have these metal doors on my watch face, you know, collapse or, or open. So that's how I first learned about the gyro was from your from your watch face design. Yeah, the, 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 as soon as they came out with the gyro, I was just like, oh, how can I use this to do like tons of different things? And I was thinking like a cuckoo clock, you know, when it opens up and that sort of thing. So um, that kind of started it all. And I'm trying to think what the, the first one that I did using that is, I think it might have been DigiGlow Spark. That sounds right. Yeah. So um, do you have any tips for designers when publishing on the Galaxy Store? I mean, we've mentioned a lot about marketing, but when it actually comes to, you know, creating the graphics uh, behind their apps, what sort of tips could you give people on publishing on the Galaxy Store? Uh, Definitely bone up on your Photoshop skills. You got to design those thumbnails. Don't just throw a, you know, a watch on a white background with the watch face on it because you really have to grab someone's attention Talking from my website design experience, on average, you have about three seconds before someone clicks the back button or continues to read on on the website. It's kind of the same thing with the watch face listing. Uh, You you know that you can have written information, everything. People aren't going to read it. They're, they're, They're visual. They want to look at the thumbnails. And it starts with the icon as well. Make sure that icon's looking good. That's great. Are you familiar with the tool that I created called the Asset Creator? Yes. And I've actually been through it and I've used some of it to um, create some of my thumbnails and, you know, pulled some stuff out of it and threw some stuff in and that sort of thing. So that's awesome. Yeah. (laughs) 
So super excited. You know, we just announced the Galaxy Watch 3. Yes. Um, and so uh, I spent a bit of time recently updating the asset creator to include all of the new watches for the Galaxy Watch 3. I just checked. You can actually go download the new updated uh, version of the asset creator. That includes all that. That was just published recently. So um, in addition to that, I also have created what we call lifestyle photo packs using the same tools within Photoshop that allow you to use smart objects to quickly copy paste your design into a, a watch and have the perspective change and have the blur change so that it truly just simply photoshops right onto the watch. I am madly working on new uh, photos that show the Galaxy Watch 3. I will be publishing those very, very soon. So super excited. Those have been a big success, a lot of help for people because it's not just showing your watch face on the watch just on a simple straight, you know, top down picture. We're actually taking the watch and putting it into a scene. So whether it is, you know, sitting on water drops or it's on a slab of granite or, you know, some high tech texture. These are great pictures to help use in your screenshots when you're publishing your app. So look for those new Galaxy Watch 3 lifestyle photo packs coming out very, very soon. Oh, cool. I'm excited. And and one thing that's cool about that is um, it allows a customer to relate to the watch and wearing that watch face more by having photos like that. So uh, that that's great. If you can get your customer to relate to your product, you're golden. Uh, an architecture professor actually told me one time that a building or a product, any type of product, it is 10% your ideas and 90% the way you present them. So if you can't present it right, then your product's not going to mean anything. So what is in the future for Infinity Watch Face Design? Tell me, what's, what can we get excited about? What's, what's happening? Oh, gosh, what is in the future? we got so many things in the future. We're going to have some, some games come out, um, you know, break into the, the other part of the app world, uh, still continue with wearables, of course. Uh, we're going to expand our video production as well, uh, working on that. And Infinity Watch Faces is going to be getting really involved with local businesses really soon and helping promote their businesses to, to other local people and visitors. Uh, ever since this whole pandemic things going on uh, local businesses have been hit so hard uh, we've lost a few in our neighborhood I'm a, I just don't want to lose anymore uh, so I'll be going out and you know just just really doing what I can to to help that's wonderful yeah these are definitely challenging times um, you know it's 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 been a while now that we've all kind of been in this sort of lockdown and and we've realized the effects that this has really had on our economy. It's also been an opportunity for us to try and find new ways to, um, you know, to still do the the work that we do and the the reach that we do. So it's nice to hear that you're, you know, finding ways to sort of help out in all of that aspect. So going back to the fun designs that you create, I, I need to ask you right now, which and you have to pick one. I know you said you've got 390 plus. I want you to pick one design. What is your current favorite? I, I know this is going to sound a little goofy and maybe a little girly. The butterfly named Fred. <laughs> I it, love that. <laughs> it's my favorite. Uh, I, I think because the way the flowers interact with your wrist and then that that butterfly just landing perfectly right there on it every single time it, it makes me happy and the dude's name is fred come on yeah. how can you not like fred the butterfly how did you come up with fred for the butterfly <laughs> i don't know um I, I i was just kind of looking at an insect one day and i i named an insect fred and then i was like ah oh, this butterfly should be named fred um no, I mean, I, I could have called it something like beautiful butterfly or blue butterfly or, you, you know, just some sort of whatever name. But let's give him an actual name and let's make a character out of this. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is a, a great story. I'm going to close this podcast, though, by asking, what does Chris Shomo do for fun when you are not designing these uh, these wild themes and wild watch faces? Oh, well, I live in the city of fun. I mean, just, just going around and, you know, going to experience the different restaurants and, um, just the atmosphere, um, in the summertime, I guess staying indoors more because it's so hot and humid down there. Uh, someone asked me one time, what's it, 
it like living in the South during all this heat? Because like just the other day, the heat index was like 105 degrees. That's, of course, when you combine the humidity and the actual temperature. That's what it feels like. Um, and I told someone, I was like, all right, take the hottest shower that you can. Now get out of the shower. Do not dry off and put your clothes on. That's what it feels like. <laughs> oh, wow. So it's a sauna out there. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. You know, and I will say, I have to share, we've had to reschedule this interview numerous times because... There was a hurricane going through Savannah and you were losing your internet connection. So yeah, living in the South, I think definitely has a lot of excitement. Well, a hurricane is actually one of the normal things for 2020, <laughs> but um, we were very fortunate. The, the hurricane mainly missed us. We got some wind from the, the outer bands and locally, yeah, my internet was like, oh, it was all over the place. We didn't have it and we had it, but yeah, it's, it's just something that we got to deal with. But, but I'm glad we were finally able to connect and, and get this interview done. Yeah, yeah this is great. This has been a lot of fun. So, Chris, thank you very much for joining the podcast. Much success to you at Infinity Watch Faces and looking forward to all the great new designs. I know they're going to be coming down the road for us. So thanks again. Thank you, Tony. And thank you, Samsung. You guys are awesome. Looking to start creating for Samsung? Download the latest tools to code your next app or get software for designing apps without coding at all. Sell your apps to the world on the Samsung Galaxy Store. Check out developer.samsung.com today and start your journey with Samsung. The PAL Podcast is brought to you by the Samsung Developer Program and produced by Tony Moreland.